Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our November Intersecting Connections. This particular uh, session, we're going to be talking about uh, what's your new normal, right? And with respect to that, particularly about perfection, as we were talking a little bit uh, before we went on air, um, this thing about perfection and us all thinking and feeling as if we have to be perfect and we have to get everything done um, seems to be weighing on many of us, particularly as we're coming out of or trying to move through even um, today's world in terms of COVID. So we thought that this would be an excellent topic uh, to kind of unpack and provide for those of you who will are viewing it now and uh, who will be viewing it. Today we have uh, four uh, amazing individuals that are here with us today. Uh, Dr. Barbara Sanders, who is with the compliance office. And a lot of times she sees things are, that are far less from perfect and how to navigate uh, that. We have uh, student interns with CAPS here, uh, Mauricio Borrego and uh, Jed Alejandro, and uh, I'm anxious to hear their perspective, particularly uh, from a standpoint of being students and graduate students at that. And then, of course, our session this morning will be moderated by Dr. Brittany Alford, who is a psychologist in the uh, Wellness Center here at the university. So I want to welcome you all, and thank you for coming, and thank you for joining us, and I am going to hand this session over to Dr. Alford. Thank you, Dr. Barlow. Thank you everyone for being here. So let's start this conversation off. So I have a series of questions that I'm going to ask each of you. I'd love to just hear your experiences and your thoughts, um, and then we can kind of turn it into a discussion as we um, keep going. So the first question today is, how does perfectionism manifest in your daily life? Well, I have an example from this morning sure. and my daily life in perfectionism. I like, I want things done a certain way in a certain time, and this is how it's got to fall out. Well, um, last night I fell asleep early, and so I did not do some things that I had planned to do to have out of the way so that my day could move on this morning. And when I woke up, it was like, oh, great. Now I've got to get this done and this done and this done. And then I got to do it so I can be at this place by this time. And it takes me this. And I said, uh, okay, you're not going to accomplish that. What actually needs to get done? The garbage is in the bathroom. Do you really need to get that to the garbage can to get the garbage can to the curb? Or do you need to get the garbage can to the curb? Oh, huh. and I will tell you, it was a major event for me not to go through every room because I meant to do this last night and have it already so I could kick it to the curb this morning to say I guess this garbage is going to sit right here because if I don't get this curb thing to the curb there will be nowhere for it to go and um, it took some some work and a good cup of coffee but I got it done and you know what the world did not come to an end surprise surprise the garbage made it to the curb, and that's all I really wanted to get done, and I did it. Thank you for sharing that. Mauricio, Jed, how does perfectionism manifest in your daily life? Um, yeah, I can, I can go ahead. Can everyone hear me well? Awesome. Um, so in a similar theme, you know, of thinking about um, time management, time constraints, um, I think how perfectionism manifests within my own life um, is really through um, kind of like this uh, area of like almost procrastination in a way where I know I want to do uh, a complete certain tasks um, in a specific manner, right? So I want to make sure they're done and they're done well. Um, but then um, knowing, okay, this is going to take me a, a specific amount of time that's probably longer than I, I should be spending on this. Um, so I procrastinate, right? I start pushing that away. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll get to that whenever I have more time. And unfortunately, that uh, 
as specifically being a grad student or just student in general, um, you eventually get to the point where, okay, I have to reach a deadline now. And now I'm, you know, rushing. Now anxiety is increasing. Now I'm not doing as well as I wanted to do in this assignment because, you know, I didn't give myself enough time or start working on it earlier. So um, I think that's kind of how it starts manifesting uh, within my day to day. Thank you, Mauricio. Jed, what about you? Yeah, I would say the same thing as others have said um, with scheduling. Uh, perfectionism often manifests, like in my experience, through that anxiety and frustration. Um, and uh, I think it, it sort of shifted uh, with the pandemic because before I always like to be um, like, you know, early to whatever appointment it might be, whether it's a doctor appointment or like a class, like being a few minutes early to kind of sit in and settle down, uh, maybe talk to, you know, some colleagues um, or just, you know, people who are around before getting started. Um, and now with a lot of virtual appointments, like if, like as soon as the hour hits, like if I'm not there and like I'm not already starting the discussion, I'm like feeling rushed already. And so, yeah, uh, that's how perfectionism often manifests for me. Thank you. So some common themes that I heard with this first question was um, that each of you all mentioned just very particular ways that you have of doing things and the way that things are supposed to look. Um, and I think that that definitely is something that can um, exacerbate the perfectionism and the, the tardiness or the procrastination that was mentioned, because if it's not going to happen the way we think it needs to happen in our mind, then it's hard for us to let it go. It's hard for us to proceed with that task instead of just being able to proceed and getting it done, even if it looks a you know different way than we initially pictured it to be. So I, I think that that is um, one common theme that we probably all on this call can can share that, um, you know, at the end of the day, there are multiple ways to get to the end goal. And we have to remember that because we probably all have a little bit of controlling tendencies and want to make sure that things go the way that we're picturing them. Um, the second question that we have today is, what do you believe your perfectionism is rooted in or exacerbated by? It's my parents' fault. <laughs> I am a middle child, I have older brother, older sister, older brother, and then three younger brothers and sisters. And I told them the first two were experiments, the rest were fun, because once they had me, they needed nothing else. And um, that didn't go over well at dinners, but hey. And my parents fed that I, I was always the smartest kid in the room, and I let you know it and uh, quietly, gently, subtly, uh, and I excelled and I got rewarded. And part of that being the smartest kid in the room was also being perfect. Like, you know, I got all A's, I had this right, I had that. So, and it was it, rewarding it. And I think I from time to time can now admit that I probably rubbed it in the faces of those close to me. It fed me, it's who I was, it helped to craft this character that I became. And so it's exacerbated by my need to continue to be the smartest kid in the room. And I still am, even if I'm the only one in the room. So I didn't mean to offend anybody, but yes. So and that's what feeds it. I appreciate your transparency and your honesty. Mauricio, Jed. I guess we'll keep the, uh, uh, <laughs> the lineup going here. Um, so yeah, since this is going on YouTube, uh, mom, I'm looking at you also blaming parents. <laughs> um, but no, um, I think for when looking at my own perfectionism, uh, I think it's definitely rooted in this kind of this, these placements of expectations, right? Whether they're placed on um, um, by myself or, you know, they were originally placed by maybe uh, parents or peers or, or um, superiors, actually. Um, but just trying, uh, it's a fear of not meeting expectations, right? And going above and beyond those expectations. 
patients constantly. Um, I think there's also this want to be uh, approved, and this is obviously um, talking about uh, my uh, personal life here, but um, also this want to be um, approved, right, a, a, a approval from others, right? Um, and uh, um, yeah, kind of yeah, like I said, uh, uh, reaching those expectations maybe set on set by others. Um, I think in terms of ex exacerbation, uh, um, I think uh, looking at comparisons, right? Um, and um, when when hearing about what others are doing, especially like from a student's perspective, you know, in the same class, in the same uh, program, looking at, oh, you know, I've, I've done this to uh, try and get ahead. And, you know, that comparison of like, okay, well, now I need to do that or more. And most of the time it's more, right? Um, yeah, so that's what I would say. Thank you, Mauricio. Jed, what about you? Uh, I was going to say something similar to Mauricio, uh, at least um, like expectations in terms of like cultural beliefs or cultural values. Um, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on like education or um, uh, like honoring your family and things like that. And so when uh, if yeah, in whatever situation it might be where you're not able to meet those expectations, well, or me, if I'm not able to meet those expectations, you know, what does that say about me as a person, um, as a child, as a brother, um, as a student, as a supervisor, whatever it might be. Um, and uh, yeah, like those insecurities, I would say would be some of the things that like, or different stressors can kind of feed off of those insecurities and, um, definitely make it harder to deal with those um, per perfectionistic tendencies and things like that. Thank you. I love all of your all's responses. I'm taking notes as you guys are talking so I can kind of picture themes. Um, but one thing that is very clear to me after listening to all three of you is that there is this identity that we have created for a variety of reasons, whether that is cultural beliefs or value systems or, you know, wanting to be the smartest person in the room or because we're rewarded for the behaviors and the accomplishments that we've received throughout our life. But at the same time, we now have put all of this pressure on ourselves to continue to, um, I guess, fulfill that identity. And on any given day, if we feel like we have not done that or are wavering in that area, then that does indeed, you know, provoke this insecurity within us. And it's that insecurity that then probably just exacerbates that need to, to be perfect even more, right? Now we have to overcompensate. We have to make up for that, those behaviors in that area. And it's just like, we're setting the ceiling that we can never actually reach. Like the bar just continues to, to be raised. Um, and meanwhile, it's it's really detrimental to our mental and emotional health because regardless if you know one day you are not meeting the expectations of being that intern or that um, director that you you know feel like you should be, that doesn't mean that tomorrow you you may not be right. Like you may absolutely exceed. So I think that it's just making sure that our our self concept is not based off of these in the moment experiences um, and specifically our expectations that we have of ourselves and others because we're all human. So I think just like giving ourselves more grace can definitely um, be helpful in reducing some of these perfectionistic tendencies. So the third question that I have is, do you all think that your perfectionism is sustainable long term? Well, I think I'll start with this one because <clears throat> I think I'm a little bit older than a few other people in the room. <laughs> just by a tad or two. <laughs> so I could address sustainability from a different perspective. And I've thought about this question a lot since I, I looked at it. And I have the perfectionism is sustainable as long as you remember to rethink it. For me, it has been what is so what what's important? And so where if I went to cook a dish and it didn't come out absolutely perfect the way I would throw it out. Now it's that's what y'all eat. So you're not going to die. So I have to look at what is realistic to me. I know the perfectionism isn't going to go away. 
you know, I, I've got it, I'm addicted to it, but what I can do is temper it. And so I began to look at ways in which to do that. So there are some things on the perfection continuum that'll be further towards the top. Others will be at the lower end. It will all be on the perfection continuum. And they can switch because that's the only way I can sustain it. I can't keep it all up here and make it happen. I won't last. And um, I guess the other piece of it for me was watching folks who lacked that ability or chose not to work towards perfection, getting the same amount of reward and accolade, if not more. And I went, uh uh. -uh. So, but I knew I couldn't be them. So I just had to work on me and my perfection continuum. And that's how I sustain it. Thank you. Mauricio? That was an amazing answer. And it's making me not want to answer that much. No, uh, um, I, I'm going to completely agree with the introspection part of, of just looking inward and how how are we going to be able to sustain um, you know these and I'm looking I'm thinking about my own in my own life right um, sustainability is um, in my opinion uh, kind of based off of the ability to regulate the co-occurring negative emotions that might be coming up with with this perfectionism right so this could be um, right so the anxiety that comes up if, if it is impacting you um, or, you know, reducing fun functioning uh, within your daily life, then, you know, it may not be sustainable to have those perfectionistic tendencies. Um, with, with that being said, I mean, if you are able to regulate those emotions and um, look at those, you know, that perfectionism and um, utilize it in a positive way, then, then yeah, definitely. And that's something that I think um, most individuals definitely do, but there comes a point where, yeah, sometimes uh, it gets difficult to regulate um, maybe some of those um, emotions that come up with wanting to be uh, perfect all the time. Thank you, Mauricio. Jen? Yeah, I would agree. You all have great answers. I'm not sure what else I could add aside from just maybe sharing some personal experience. Um, I realized that, um, yeah, I would say pretty early, like even just starting in undergrad, um, my perfectionistic tendencies, like trying to do that long term across like, you know, four years of college um, was really, really challenging, really difficult. Um, and I started to really kind of going with Mauricio was saying, I kind of noticed how it started to impact like my relationships. Um, and the quality of those relationships or um, just my ability to kind of um, like self-care or, or do things that I enjoy doing. And so uh, one of the challenges was kind of finding where can I, yeah, where where's the little, the space where that perfectionistic uh, like habit or pattern can kind of uh, temporarily go um, so that I can do the things that I need to do. Um, and yeah, I quickly realized that, um, yeah, I'm not going to be the student who always gets an A on every test or exam or paper. Uh, I'm definitely not a great public speaker, um, but what I can do is uh, just kind of recognize like, you know, this is who I am and, uh, you know, what I can do, what I uh, just, how much effort I can put in without, you know, kind of detracting from my uh, myself as as um, or my identity is something that um, it, that I can do in the long term, as opposed to the perfectionism um, taking that identity for me. Thank you, Jed. You all had great answers, and I really like uh, what you just said, where you're saying, you know, the perfectionism taking that identity like from you, right? Like you are choosing to engage in this perfectionistic continuum. 
And therefore you're realizing, all right, it is going to impact my mental health and my sanity if I try to juggle everything at this 100% level. But instead you're now saying, okay, like how can I readjust these expectations? How can I readjust these perceptions and, and find space for it, you know, have, have a balance. Um, which I do think too is just giving yourself some grace because I was loving what um, Dr. Sanders was saying earlier, which is like, I'm not going to throw it away. You're going to eat it, and we're not going to die. <laughs> like we're all going to be okay. And I think at the end of at the end of the day, it's just being okay with not being okay. Like there's everything is not always going to be okay, but that doesn't mean that our house is on fire and that we have to respond to it as such. So, thank you all for those responses. All right, we have a few more questions. So the next question is, what are some short-term and long-term impacts of your perfectionism? I will go first this time. <laughs> Jed, why don't you start us off this time? We'll go backwards, we'll go in reverse. <laughs> sure, I can do that. Um, I think for me, in my experience, the short-term consequences or, or impacts are the uh, just the experience that I have in the moment, whether it's uh, difficult or challenging thoughts that I have to work through, or like difficult emotions, like having to deal with um, whether it's you know fears of disappointment or or things like that, um, or the anxiety piece of uh, like fear of failure, things like that. Um, so having to um, or experiencing that in the short term in terms of uh, perfectionism um, in my case. Um, and then some of the long-term ones I would say is um, like just sustaining that stress for, for long-term and having an impact on whether it's relationships or even like my physical health. And so um, sometimes having to weigh like, okay, uh, what's what's more important in this moment? Um, like, can I tolerate a little bit of that anxiety for now, um, or am I willing to accept the the stress long term over the course of months or 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 years, whatever it might be? Thank you, Mauricio. Um, yeah, that was a great answer, and uh, I, I I have. Um, very similar answer in terms of short-term impacts. The way I've um, kind of identified how um, you know, perfectionism has uh, impacted me um, in the short term would be, uh, I would say, a decrease in, in productivity in some way, right? Where you um, are, are constantly um, spending more time on details that would, you know, are they completely necessary? You know, um, would you have gotten the same score? Would you have um, on the same point across if you spent um, time on those <clears throat> on those details um, and uh, I would say and the positive side of that it would be also an increase in quality where maybe those details do actually increase the quality of your work right um, <clears throat> I would also say like uh, Jed mentioned um, a, an impact on mental health right so an increase in, in anxiety that um, already compounds on other anxiety um, or other stressors that we may that we, that we may have um, throughout our lives, specifically as maybe a, a grad student, right? Where we have to um, be thinking about, um, let's say, internship or uh, you know uh, uh, our lives outside of academics, and uh, um, you know. So, um, with that being said, I think a long-term impact that can definitely um, um, be, yeah, uh, present would definitely be um, uh, an impact on relationships, like on our social life and um, how maybe spending, you know, let's say uh, a, a larger amount of time on, you know, getting something done perfectly, um, whether it has to do with school or, or other thing, um, you know, decreases the amount of time you have spending with um, uh, loved ones or friends, but also in terms of comparison, right, where uh, maybe um, you start having these negative views or perspectives on an individual because you compare yourself so much to them. Um, so I think that's uh, definitely something that comes up for me. As Thank a, you. As a savior, I think when, when I look at 
short term and long term, I'm going to talk about being a parent and being an African American woman with African American kids that were in predominantly white school districts. Um, I guess when I think about the short term impacts, what I realized was for whatever these kids looked like and whatever folks might have thought they were, they're black and you are going to be viewed differently in this world. Your C plus, your C is a failure. Where Susie the Wonder Bread cheerleader, well, that's the best she could do. Uh uh. So, you, you know, so they had to deal with this crazy mom. They called me Psycho Mom, and it was for a reason because I was crazy as hell. But they were good students. I mean, it was down to how you looked when you showed up at my job or for anything else. I mean, it was how you talked, how you looked. How you, were, how you did in school, you were going to be that model child because you needed all that artillery to fight off what was out there waiting for you. And as crazy as that sounds, that's how I did. And, and, and I think sometimes, I thought sometimes that, you know, the consequence of some of that was they didn't like me very much some days and I didn't very much care. The long-term impact, my daughters are in their 40s. And they've said, Mom, we learned so much from you. We are prepared for anything. Um, my older daughter uh, had a pretty high-level job with this one company. And she they were having a director's meeting. And this one man was pushing to have this one particular thing for his son who had come into the franchise. And the, and the CEO was saying, yeah, 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 we should do that. And she said, she tried to talk him out of it. And she said, well, you know what? If you're just going to go home and do that, then why don't we get the receptionist as the second signature on the checking account? Because we're going to be paying out a lot. And he went, oh, I'll think about that. So she thought later, ah, maybe I should go up and apologize. And so she did. And he said, no, the way you said that made me think. What did we do? He said, where did you get that from? She said, wait till you meet my mother. So that short term, and I say it short term because I, you, know, you only have them as kids for so long and then they're on their own. So it was a push to that perfectionism to keep them sharp, to keep that edge there, because I know there's a whole lot of stuff out there trying to knock that edge off. So you would be able to sustain that over time. And the long-term impact, they love me. They actually said I was a great mom. So I would say that there are short-term consequences and there can be long-term rewards. And it, it's all situational. So that's my response to that. Thank you. All right, the next question that we have is, have you ever attempted to decrease your perfectionistic tendencies? I know some of you have already spoken to this, but if you have anything else to share, I'd love to hear. Well, I did once or twice. Um, and I wasn't very happy. Uh, it was uh, it was a work situation, and um, there was a colleague who was known for showing up on time, taking breaks on time, and going home on time. And pretty much was a regular screw up because that belongs was off his desk. Well, I got caught in one of his getting it off his desk events. Um, and so I um, had I had to figure out how do I go ahead and get this piece of the work done but teach a lesson at the same time. So I, I did, and this work that he had passed off was 99% incorrect. So the VP, I agreed that, yeah, okay, I'll go through it and I'll tag those things that aren't correct. I didn't say I'd say, tell him what they were, I just tagged them. So it was a stack of contracts about this high. There was about this much 
that was correct. But I tagged everyone that was wrong and I turned it over to the VP like a good team player. And he said, Hi, Barbara, I knew you'd come around. Uh huh, you wait. That Monday morning, he flew in and he said, You know what? This took all my time. This did this, this did this. And it was, I'm going, Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I did that. The consequence was I ended up with that project because I always did it right. Uh, so then I decided, well, you know, you're going to do that to me. Why don't, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show up on time. I'm going to take breaks on time. And I'm going to leave on time. After the second day, I was worn down trying to be imperfect. It, it just did not work for me. So what I had to recognize was this is the way you built. This is how this is going to happen. You cannot change who you are. You hurt yourself trying to be less than. But I began at that time to reorder priorities. So that's, I attempted to decrease it by being extreme. And then I had to come back to a less extreme position, but make some changes that allowed me to continue to survive uh, in a meaningful way. Thank you. Mauricio? Yeah, I, uh, when hearing that, again, um, that's, um, uh, that's, that's awesome to hear that, that experience and um, hear from yeah, a different perspective. I think uh, for me, uh, it really looks like this theme of acceptance in a way of uh, accepting um, what, you know, uh, your, your, your perfectionistic tendencies as long as they aren't having a significant negative impact uh, on your life and uh, I can think of one way where uh, or a few times where uh, I definitely try to reduce that um, that impact by um, trying to uh, going back to um, my perspective as a student um, trying you know finishing a, a, a pretty big paper and uh, and then just um, distracting myself knowing that I'd go back and you know look at the details and um, continuously try and uh, edit it and uh, and actually just once I was done with it and it looked good enough um, I just you know distracted myself in a way to where um, I, I didn't have to look at it again and, and just submitted it and I don't know if I did, did that again after <laughs> after that one time but yeah it was definitely um, I don't know if it ended up uh, making me feel any better but I definitely tried that so Thank you. Jed? Yeah, I definitely identified with uh, what you had said, Dr. Sanders, um, like kind of going to that extreme. Uh, I had, it, it just made me think of, I had a roommate uh, in undergrad and um, this roommate uh, was just like the complete opposite of me. Like he didn't, uh, well, or apparently I, I never really got to see him study. Um, he was always like on his computer playing video games and um, or or hanging out with with friends. And um, and yeah, every time like he saw me, I was always like studying um, and maybe on the weekends um, if we saw each other, like I would be having fun. But um, I, I tried to reduce my uh, perfectionistic and uh, tendencies and um, yeah it really impacted like I was pretty dissatisfied with my work um, and it was it was even hard to like even want to spend time with other people just because like I was so focused on um, like my academic performance or or whatever it was at the time and so um, yeah finding a balance of like yeah how can I still be me but also still accept that yeah I'm I may not be, you know, I may not be the smartest person in the room or, um, or like, yeah, however many hours I studied, like if I'm still going to get that similar grade of like a C plus, um, you know, just recognizing that, you know, if, if that's where I can be and still move on in life, um, then, then that's okay. Thank you, Jed. 
Um, our last question is, have you encountered any barriers to decreasing your perfectionistic tendencies? And I know that a couple of you um, did give examples that touch specifically on that. But Jed, I think I'm going to actually start with you just because you just answered. Um, and I just would love to have you elaborate a little further. You know, what has helped you actually accept that good enough or accept that, okay, this is how much work it takes for me to get this specific outcome and this is what it's going to be? Uh, I think what's helped me, I've been fortunate enough to have um, several mentors that I can look up to, mentors who um, are, <laughs> It's funny because they're very different from me because I, as a person who's always wanting to achieve the highest and do everything well, um, I've had mentors who, yeah, sure, they were very smart and, uh, and very thoughtful, uh, but like having them kind of normalize or let me know that like, hey, um, I wasn't always like the way that you probably see me now. And, um, and so, yeah, that that piece is humbling, and um, uh, and I guess part of the acceptance piece is recognizing, like, or kind of realigning maybe what my values are. So for my mentors, their their values were their family, and so like, if if I were to send an email to that professor after hours, like they're not going to respond like over the weekend. They're going to be with their family, and. Um, me thinking about that, like, hey, I can still be a good student, I could still contribute a lot to the world, and I could still be um, present with my family and, and uh, spend time with them or support them in, you know, whatever way they, they might need. Um, so I think part of it is, yeah, having that opportunity to um, connect with others and see, like, how they are managing their uh, perfectionism and kind of identifying what those barriers are for myself and and then realigning the values that might be getting in the way of that. Thank you. I love that response. Mauricio, what about you? I know um, when you were talking earlier, you mentioned acceptance and this concept of being good enough and the difficulty, you know, of, of trying to be just good enough versus um, following the continuum of perfectionism that you're comfortable with. So for you, what barriers like specifically um, have you encountered and how have you overcome them? Yeah, um, well, I think I'm still in the process of overcoming them. But um, yeah, I think some of the barriers that come up uh, you know, fall into the theme of insecurities, honestly. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, there are insecurities that fuel this, these, these different fears that come up, right? Especially, um, you know, trying to move up within your career. You know, there's this fear of failure, of course, of not reaching your goal that you have set for yourself. And, um, and, and you know, with that is this fear of regret, right? Where, um, you know, you maybe put in, you know, maybe trying to um, go along with that acceptance of, you know, your perfectionistic tendencies, but maybe, um, you know, uh, not putting in as much time as, as you wanted to um, on a certain task and then fearing, you know what, like, maybe if I did put in more time or um, maybe if I looked at it in a different way, um, I, you know, what could have come from that? What could have been, right? Um, I, I think one other fear that comes up, I think, is also this fear of, uh, of judgment, right, from others, specifically your uh, superiors, right? You have your supervisors and um, others that are constantly evaluating you within, let's say, um, you know, graduate school, but also within, like, internship. Um, and um, there's this uh, barrier of wanting to portray your best self. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of some of those barriers. Thank you, I love that. And Dr. Sanders. You know, um, I'm gonna date myself. I don't know how many of you were familiar with the uh, original Life Series, uh, Life Serial commercials. And Life Serial was this new serial that was coming out and nobody wanted to try it. They said, so let's let Mikey do it. And then Mikey would try the serial, and Mikey said, oh, it's great. 
So I felt like I quite often was Mikey. Oh, we'll give it to him. You know, give it a barb. You know it's going to be top shelf because it would be. Uh, and so I had gotten in my own way by being so good at what I did. Uh, and everyone expected that and nothing less because that's what I had established. So one of the things that I had to learn to do because I was my own worst enemy, because I was my own publicity, was to be able to then say to folks, I couldn't do something. However, I will tell you that that came a long way in my career. It wasn't when my first, second, or third job. I had been working for quite some time, and retirement was beginning to look good, and my 401ks were looking good. And it was like, I don't care what I say to you right now. And I, I had a staff, there was a, a staff person who was leaving, and uh, this was in a new position that I had. And so there were people who were interfering with my being able to replace that position. And they had convinced the president, because I was a direct report to the president, that I didn't need that position or that it would take too long for it to happen. So I need to do it this way. And I remember talking to the HR director I worked with at that time. And she said, well, if you don't like it, Barb, take it to the president. Well, I was at a point in my life where it was going to take you two years to get rid of me anyway. So what was I going to care? And I was making plenty of money if you want me to sit there. So I went to the president and she said, well, this, I said, well, okay, here's your option. You can have me being me, or I can be the highest paid clerk on this campus. Which would you prefer? And she said, how soon can you get someone in there to take care of that job? So the barrier was me. And the barrier was my always responding. And the barrier was that they could have low expectations of everyone else. But when it came, you really wanted it to shine, you went to Barbara. And Barbara had to find ways to say no. So I said, yeah, I can be my own clerk. You want to pay me six figures to sit up there and say, it's down the hall? Or, hello, how can I help you, but I can't help you? I'll be glad to do it. But the look on the faces of Funko Clint, what happened? Did she have a stroke and we didn't know it? But that, those, I was my barrier and I was also my own way out. But it was, I also had time on my hand and a whole lot of other stuff. And the other was, Maybe nobody else could do it. So I had some bargaining chips. And, and, and you have to pick your time and place and your battle. You can't go out fighting them all. But when you do, know that you're going to do it knowing that you're going to win it. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So just to recap and to encourage those listening in, I would definitely um, encourage you all to think about your own perfectionistic tendencies and as well as, you know, how is pride, ego, anxiety, fear of failure, you know, just disappointment and regret. How are all of those things potentially contributing, you know, to these perfectionistic tendencies or are your perfectionistic tendencies rooted? in these different topics. Um, I just think it's a, a really good um, introspective way to get a different pers perspective on why you know we tick the way that we do when it comes to perfectionism, um, when it comes to overcoming the barriers um, of perfectionism or of decreasing that perfectionism. I think that um, some things that I heard was the humility, right? The acceptance, um, reordering priorities, becoming okay with being good enough, you know, um, being able to identify like when your time and places where you do have those bargaining chips that Dr. Sanders was just speaking to and, and just being okay 
with, you know, not being okay sometimes. Sometimes we have our 100% days and other times we have our 75% days and, you know, just not punishing ourselves because of that. Because ultimately, um, like Dr. Sanders was saying, we do get in our own way, you know, in a variety of ways. We become our own worst enemy, whether that is manifesting now procrastination or in, you know, depression or anxiety, which can be paralyzing and really hinder us from, from productivity in general. Um, so it's just understanding kind of what's going going on with us and why we're ticking the way that we are and what can be done about it. I'm not sure if anyone has any other final comments that they'd like to make. Um, Anna, I know you're on the call, um, and Giselle, I'm not sure if you all would like to contribute. I just want to say thank you so much for sharing that those pieces of, you know, I, I was growing up with that whole expectation as a minority female that we always had to go above and beyond because that was how we were able to be competitive in the world. And, you know, you had to be able to uphold that to the best of your ability in any way that you entered. And so the three of you have really shed such insight on, you know, yes, that's what we were taught. It's not what you have to carry with you. You have to understand that at some point you got to lay that down and be, and it's okay to lay that down and be able to move. And I think during this pandemic, that's one of the things I've been struggling so hard with because, you know, I was a high achiever. I got all of my major goals done really young. And by the time I was in my mid twenties, I was like, well, I got all my degrees. I got my job. I got my money. I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids. I don't want pets. So what else is next? You know? And like, I, <laughs> it was like, I don't know what else to do. And then I get to this point where everybody's working at different levels and different functionalities and still getting, as, as we have mentioned here, the same accolades and the same, oh, that's great. You're at least you're here. You're open. And it's like, yeah, but you're not working. We're working. And you know, we're, <laughs> you know, we're working and seeing students and doing programs and all this stuff. And it, that's it's not just enough just to be here, you know, and then having to redefine that this whole dialogue today has really made me want to stop and think and reevaluate like why am I pressuring myself so strongly to uphold that I understand that you know I'm my own I'm my biggest competitor and my own worst enemy and that not everyone works at my same pace capacity or understanding and they don't have to you know and that's this listening to all of your stories and insight from all the spaces that you're at has really like relieved me in a way that is it's it's okay it's okay you know i'm i'm learning i'm learning some new things about how i need to move in these spaces that i was not aware so tactfully before that you guys have let me in on so thank you thank you very much <laughs> thank you so much Dr. Barlow, would you like to contribute at all? Have any comments? Yeah, I mean, um, I concur with uh, what Dr. M was saying. Um, thank you all for, for letting us in. Um, and, and by you all letting us in, you know, you allowed me to be able to reflect. Um, you know, uh, as, as Anna was saying, you know, Every day we, we come into the intersection and try to figure out, okay, we're doing this. We want to do more. We want to do more. And then oftentimes maybe comparing, you know, or saying, well, why isn't somebody else doing this? And therefore we have to do it. And the bottom line is, is that no, because the sun will come up tomorrow if, if in fact we don't, it, it doesn't get done or it doesn't get done in this particular kind of a way. Um, it's interesting to, to think in terms of perfection versus standards. And, and it's kind of like, maybe they're not any different. You know, if you've got these very, very high standards of how you want things done, like things done or want to do things right, uh, that that is your your own sense of perfectionism and, you know, maybe time to rethink that. So I really appreciate you all uh, engaging in this conversation today. Um, and just, you know, thank you because it was very insightful and very, very much self-reflective for me. 
I appreciate Thank that. you. I also appreciate you all's insights and I'm happy that I could be here today. And to the three panelists, do you all have anything else you'd like to share? Thank you for inviting me. I really enjoyed this. Thank you for coming. Yeah, same. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, you know, as as much as you can to, you know, have patience for yourself through this process. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you all. And I hope you all have a great day. All right. Thank, thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for yep. being here. Thank you, Brittany. Appreciate you. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Hey.